There are times where you think that you need to own some sort of special supercar for a daily driver, like a $60,000 GTR on Blizzax, or like a $35,000 Ferrari you found on the marketplace. And the truth is, you don't. What you need to own is some sort of daily driver you can beat up. You don't have to feel bad when you run into a curb. And sometimes, just a car that's gonna get you from A to B without having to worry about how much of a dent it's gonna put in your wallet. I'm Alex, Alex out of Fine Instagram. In today's episode of Opposite Lanes, we're gonna be comparing whether you should own one of the dailies of dailies, the kings of the road, a 2003 Subaru WRX or a 2003 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Why is it with Volkswagens, like every single time you get closer, you just notice the weirdest things? Or like, like why does it do that? Hi, we're gonna be doing a 2003 GTI in a Moly Yellow, one of a thousand. It's very important that we say that because it makes us feel better when we pay extra money for a car. And we're looking at the daily drivability. This one starts, so we're already off to a great start. This is Dakota's new daily. He traded in his dang near brand new wagon for this bad boy, for this Amola Yellow GTI. Now this thing is on, I think it's on like Racelands, it's on three SDM wheels, which look very, very good on this car. And it has the 1.8 T, which makes me very, very happy in life. Now the thing to remember with daily drivers is it's not really about, you know, how perfect is it? It's not really about whether you're not gonna run into something, it's a matter of when. It's a matter of how much damage can you do to a car when you're in high school or you're in college where the thing will just still treat you right. And for those that don't know, the GTI is like the official car of the high school parking lot. And one of the things, just like the R32 that we reviewed, is how much visibility it has, how comfortable it is to drive. And even though this is a 20th anniversary, so this is 17 years old now, going on 18 years old now, it still feels really nice. Sure, there's a couple things wrong with it that we're not really gonna jump into, but we will, like the hood being smashed to bits, or the fact that there are these weird creases near the fender corners, or the fact that your door handles move. You know, that's a little, that's a little stuff, right? Just Take a picture from 10 feet away, put a little preset on it, throw it up on Instagram, get your 3,000 likes because it's a Volkswagen, it's a GTI, so you're gonna get it, and move on with your life. Everything about the car sounds fantastic. The 1.8T is a motor that you can't really go wrong with, on top of the fact that really the only thing it likes to eat is just more oil as it gets older. But it climbs really well. It's got a little bit of that blow off valve. It's got that lovely little front wheel drive little shake that it got going on. But for the most part, when you're looking at a daily driver, this ain't half bad. It's got a tall roof line. That's important because when you go to U-Haul, because your parents kicked you out, because you spent too much time partying on a Friday night, you gotta make sure you can stack at least two boxes tall. You gotta make sure that when you go to college and you inevitably park three miles away from campus because campus pricing is just too damn high for some reason, I don't know why campus parking is so expensive, you gotta put a bicycle back there or maybe you put the bicycle on top. This car can really do it all. It has been able to do it all forever. Even nowadays, you still see people driving GTIs literally everywhere. Half of our staff has GTIs. It's just a solid car that you can't go wrong with. Modification is there if you are somebody that wants to have a couple little extra modification points. If you want to do an intake and exhaust and all that sort of stuff, you can do it with a GTI. And to the three parents watching, whether a GTI is a good car for your son or daughter or not, I can tell you that it is, because even if they floor it, it's still not that fast. 
It's not going to be that fast. It can be quick, but it won't be fast. It'll sound fast and loud and obnoxious, but it's not actually fast and obnoxious. My favorite thing about the car is definitely the color. The interior is still nice, all things considered. For being a 2003, the buttons still look new, which is such a weird thing. It's got the nice billet aluminum for the 20th anniversary. I don't think there's any sticky buttons. There's no sticky buttons, so it's already beaten the Ferrari. I mean, everything about the car, especially on the inside, is super nice. The thing with dailies is it's not, does it have an issue? It's just, how many issues are under control? Because if they're under control, you're gonna be fine. And with a Volkswagen GTI, you're gonna have issues, right? Like, I'm pretty sure, not because of choice, like, there is a check engine light on somewhere, likely disconnected. Maybe there's some tape hiding it, but that's okay. Because it's just what they do. It's, it's a controllable issue. I don't know, I really like it. AC blows nice, modifications are good, probably needs a new hood, maybe a new roof. Kinda needs a couple things. Probably new wheels, a little bit of scraping happening, a little bit of curb rash. When I say a little, I mean a lot. Now, one of the things that this car doesn't have that the Subaru does, obviously, is the all-wheel drive. Another thing is just the, the loudness, I would say, and the fact that it is just a little bit more of an aggressive car. Really, the only thing that makes this car aggressive is the color, whereas everything about the Subaru is aggressive, which is why it's probably the other unofficial car of every high school or college parking lot, because it's just the car that screams I need something reliable, but I'll be damned if I ain't buying something fun. So JT, this is your Subaru. <clears throat> what do you need to tell me before I drive it? All right, so right now, if you go over 10 pounds of boost, it'll sputter, bad injector on cylinder two. Okay. Um, and other than that, uh, I guess, 40 miles per hour in fourth gear is pretty silent. And I don't know, like 30 and third, if you're trying to like be quiet and hide from a cop, otherwise you're pretty It's really loud. This is a daily driver? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's, okay, let's go. Let's, let's just do it. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna be honest and We need like a 40 ride of this video so that you can smell what I smell. It smells like oil. I've heard this car is very loud for no reason, really whatsoever. Judging by the location of the seatbelt, I don't feel like it was, it's used that much. God, oh my gosh. Okay. All right, please start. You serious? Why is it so loud? We didn't even do anything. Check engine light, brake light on. All right, let's go. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is JT's, I'm gonna have to like yell. Why is it so loud? I don't understand. This is JT's 2003 Subaru WRX. It's got as many loud parts as you could possibly imagine. Intake, exhaust, all that good stuff. Blow off valve, boost gauge. This thing is so unnecessary loud. He said third gear and 30, he's a liar. Fourth gear and 40? Oh, there it is. All right, so we're gonna cruise at 40 this entire time because dear God, is it way too loud to hear anything. 2003 Zuber WRX is like the go-to when it comes down to high school or college or maybe your first aftermarket or automotive enthusiast purchase because Subaru is known for their engine layout, the fact that it's symmetrical all-wheel drive, and the fact that you can pretty much drive these things anywhere. They have got four doors, they're a four-cylinder. It pretty much checks all the T's, crosses all the I's, that's the wrong direction of explaining that. But ultimately, it does do everything that you would want to do as a daily driver. The biggest thing that comes down with, especially Subarus, is just what happens when they start to get modified. And then where does the reliability go? And usually, it's out of the window, especially on the older ones. Older ones require a little bit more love, you know? Not that you can't keep them alive. 
but they do start to develop a little bit they do tend to develop some more issues along the way when you compare it to a gti and which one you'd rather actually have it comes down to well honestly it depends on i hate saying this but like for the price point if you find a stock one subaru is going to do more with about the same because you get the all-wheel drive which is something the gti doesn't have you're going to get that boxer rumble which is something the gti doesn't have and you're also gonna get four doors, which is very, very nice. You don't get as much uh, roof space, but you get enough to put people in, and if you don't slam it on the ground, you're gonna be able to pretty much take friends anywhere, which is pretty nice. If you live up north where there's winter, fr uh, front wheel drive can survive, but all wheel drive is so, so very nice, especially symmetrical all wheel drive because it kinda just makes it a little bit more fun to play around with if you find an empty parking lot in Mexico and uh, wanna, wanna have fun with it. Let's talk about some of the cons. Finding a 2003 Subaru WRX used, 17 years old, uh, unmodified is, is, is pretty much the equivalent of winning the lottery. Uh, it just doesn't exist. It doesn't happen. So usually picking one up, you're gonna end up with somebody else's problems, unless you're paying a premium price for it, in which case you're still ending up with somebody's problems. They're just more organized problems. I'd say some of the biggest negatives to owning the Subaru, besides the fact that the pricing can be just a little bit higher, the repair cost can be a little bit higher. Uh, in terms of modifying, the reliableness does get thrown out of the window. The 1.18, in my eyes, is an easier motor to keep alive from a daily driving perspective. And finally, the biggest thing with the Subarus and sometimes one of the biggest negatives to it especially the older ones is that because it was essentially a performance sedan with a turbo these cars were generally abused more than the GTI counterparts the GTI counterparts had so much volume and units sold that you can find them from people unmolested. You can find them from people that aren't modified, that literally just drove them as a daily. Much easier than in my eyes of finding a stock WRX that has all the right, you know, compartment pieces that isn't, you know, screaming at you for existing. Super WRX is a fantastic platform. All of them, all the generations for Super WRX are a fantastic platform, but when you're looking at it from a daily drivability standpoint in Wisconsin, in a perfect world, the Subaru should take the cake. In this weird thing that we call the real world, odds are against you in finding one, which is probably why you're better off with a GTI. Plus, I like the look of the GTI just a hair more than the early gen Subarus. Oh, and I forgot this car has a bunch of STI things on it, which is cool, I guess, but I don't know why the Subaru needs to be so loud. I'm not entirely sure what we did to it to make it so angry. It still smells like a ton of oil. We didn't let it go into limp mode. The check engine light is on. It was filled up with fluids, you know? I did get the disclaimer on this car and I didn't have to get the disclaimer on that car. Max, what would you rate this car? Three. Why? He rated it a three. Yeah. The max score is a three. It's pretty clapped. It's, it's clapped. It's clapped. Is it a banger? It's a banger. Is it a banger? Yeah. All right. It smells like oil. It wouldn't be that bad. Yeah. I hate the oil smell. It smells like AutoZone in here. The GTI and the Subaru WRX, the 2003 models, definitely have a run for which one should you buy if you only have one car. One of them is front wheel drive, has a 1.8T, has a huge community behind it, has a beautiful interior, and is definitely one that I would say is probably the more comfortable. On the other side, you've got the angry, aggressive, angsty teenager, and all of us wanted to have a big turbo, a loud car, and a huge wing, but at least it's all wheel drive, so it's gonna get you around more, and it still has a trunk and two more doors to boot. Which one should you pick? Well, I think if you're looking for something clean and nice, the GTI is probably gonna seal the deal. If you're loud and rowdy, try finding a Subaru WRX. Unless you can find a clean one, 
in which case buy a clean one and then never modify it because if you do end up modifying it turns into one of those cars that just slowly falls apart and because it was made in the early 2003 the odds of you actually being able to modify correctly are super super low the gti same thing because you got to replace everything when you start to modify it. when you modify the parts you got bolts that break you got rust you got to deal with nobody's going to deal with it so they're going to just zip tie it together it's just how they do things it's just not something that you're going to want to do